Ministers, I just wanted to thank you all for being here, for showing interest, and mainly for giving us hope that somebody is interested. Um, I'll extend that also to Mark and his team because I think um, it's very important that when we're talking about uh, river systems in particular and biota, we note that we are earthlings, that we are all connected and that it is in fact the river systems that connect us. Um, I live in Golgol, which is just over the hill from here uh, on the Murray River. I grew up uh, for the better part of my life in Muldura and spent many years camping along the Darling um, at a, a particular friend's shack um, just out the, uh, the back of Wentworth. So um, I, I too have some um, history, not as extensive as Ron's, but um, some history of um, swimming, boating, fishing and mucking around in the clear waters of the Darling back in the day. Um, I'm interested, I guess, and, and I could potentially wrap it on for hours, so I'm pleased someone's here that can stop me from doing that, and I'll, I'll try to keep to task. I don't want to dwell too much on how we got to here or any of the finger pointing. Um, there are some things that need to be said, and I'm sure they will be. Um, so I'll just skip straight to the solutions, uh, if, if you don't mind, as, as I see them. Um, for some time now I've been advocating for a National Water Ombudsman because I feel that the Australian people have reached a point where they no longer have faith in the political process or indeed any of the parties or in fact any political will to exert any real change in the current climate. Um, for mine, the only reason that we can affect change under the current constitution and the separation of powers, the laws in our country, is to uh, have the states divest their powers as they have for the purposes of the Murray-Darling Basin Plan, but into a National Water Ombudsman, which would um, take uh, that level of decision-making, arbitration, maybe enforcement, I'm not sure about that, I'll leave that to greater minds than mine to decide, um, uh, into the judiciary rather than the legislature where we've seen and heard already that, that there um, is the potential for political donations um, and party politics to sway policy. Um, I think uh, an ombudsman, if they were given um, appropriate uh, powers um, and obviously a need to publicly report what is in the greater public interest um, would be able to help inform some level of standardisation across the states, which I think is a massive issue, especially to a cross-border community such as ours that's trying to um, struggle, first of all, against the trope of water is a complex matter. It isn't. We all need it. If we don't have it after three days, we die. It's as simple as that. Um, there are all of these uh, constructs around water that have been imposed to keep an understanding of the water away from the people, which is the most damaging thing you can do. Um, one of the ways that our community has been damaged is by continually um, and over a long period of time, I have to say as well, taking responsibility for decisions and in fact um, any understanding of the way local systems work, the way the water moves, the way it's captured, um, the way it recedes after a flood, um, the, the, um, the uh, fish and mammals that are drawn to it in particular seasons, the, the variations, away from local communities who know the systems best. Um, by having standardised um, laws across the states, uh, we can much better keep tabs on how they're operating, how they're interacting, um, what the licences are bloody well called from one state to another, for starters, um, and, uh, uh, and, and whether it's working. Uh, for each state. We, we need to have a national level of oversight in this country that the Murray-Darling Basin Plan and indeed the authority does not currently have. 
every um, Australian taxpayer dollar, uh, a percentage of that goes into operation of the Murray-Darling Basin Authority and the plan, um, except there is no oversight for, say, the Fitzroy River in Western Australia or Tasmania. If there was a National Water Ombudsman, if there were disputes anywhere across any state, they, could, they would have somewhere to go. There could be a resolution, there could be an arbitration, there could be a conciliation, there could be um, a recommendation from that um, that could inform the laws of the country. Um, that could make recommendations for future laws, um, processes and policies. Um, and I think the general public would have more faith in that. Um, the other motion that sort of goes with that is for a national uh, water registry. I believe there was such a thing. Um, there are a lot of very different um, databases that collate a whole stack of different data from various agencies, some state, some federal, um, uh, and, and you really do sometimes have to search across different data to locate information that you're after. Um, with, <coughs> I, I mentioned the mistrust in the community. I think also we've had um, very serious allegations of quite high level and uh, large amounts of water theft, uh, rotting the system, influencing policy, um, and I'll use the 2012 Barwon Darling water sharing plan as a case in point, um, where uh, you know the, the big switcheroo between what was given to public submission and what was passed in parliament, which was um, uh, amended on the say-so of a, a very strong, um, I should say, industry. I was going to say individual on behalf of an industry, but I won't go there. Um, and uh, if there were somewhere um, that could, uh, without, I know there's a lot of concern around commercial in confidence information at the moment. If, if, if old mate can row down the river and see his neighbour's pumps are all switched on at an inappropriate time or when the river flow is so low that it's not appropriate or that they've, you, you know they've run out of allocation because they told you down the pub last week, you've got that information anyway. Why should that information not be put on a database where people can see, oh, they've run out of their thing, so now it's my turn or, or whatever. You know, you can plan um, your irrigation needs. Um, you can, if, if there are, if, if it's tied in with uh, satellite imaging of um, soil wetness, uh, movement of water, um, if uh, any anomalies of any of that can be instantly reported or trigger a cease to pump. Um, I know John Deere tractors, for example, have a, a kill switch. So if the tractor's switched on, you're not there, you haven't punched your code in, the satellite reports that there's an, uh, an, an, an limit, an, there's an inappropriate use of this vehicle that, that you haven't approved. There'll be a kill switch on the motor, your tractor won't operate. We should have the same technology on metres. Um, we should also have somebody who is um, uh, respected and has the faith and trust in us all you could call them a regulator, maybe it'd be an ombudsman or someone sitting underneath them in an enforcement sort of arm that can just press a button and kill a pump, a section of pumps, or if, if required, em embargo a whole section of river um, because there's a downstream requirement. Um, uh, I have made previous submissions um, in various capacities, which I will forward um, later so that you've got all of that information. So I'll try not to go over it. Um, I'll, I'll jump to now. Um, the government, the New South Wales government has released a extreme events policy, which has no action attached to it. Um, for example, Wentworth Shire Council uh, um, the, the Lower Darling River was upgraded to drought level rating four 
on the, I think it was the 4th of December last year. Council as the local water utility was not in, ad, advised at all. Um, there was no action, no corresponding action upstream. So it was uh, critical, I think it's called, critical rating um, at the very end of the river system, uh, number four. There was three above it, two and two. So no change for anything happening upstream. Meanwhile, we're dying, literally. Um, that needs to change. There needs to be, uh, at the very least, uh, local water utilities need to have, I'll just go back, um, under the constitution, the state government holds a responsibility for water. Um, there has been an increasing uh, handballing of responsibility onto local councils. Um, so where um, council isn't even advised and, and council provides town water to townships including Poon Carey in, in our instance, uh, Pomona, Wentworth, etc., um, Gold Gold, you would have seen the water tower, it's just over there. Um, we need to be uh, informed, kept in the loop and hopefully have some sort of say. Um, you know, to have uh, this buck passing imposed onto a council. Uh, we have been carting water, Wentworth Shire Council that is, not myself personally, since last August, I believe. Um, uh, only some months, and I can't remember off the top of my head how many, since we stopped carting water last year. So this is now an ongoing, we could even say annual event. Um, we have had to fight for many months to recoup costs um, last time, which I believe we've now been paid for. I believe um, a couple of uh, last month, actually, I think we received a letter saying that the government does intend to pay us, and then they've gone into caretaker mode. Um, the extreme events policy sets out uh, which agencies and how they get together to resolve critical water issues, which include quality as well as supply. Um, council does not have a seat at the table. We've, we've angled for that. I believe that has now changed and I'll, I'll hope that that has changed. Um, I believe the way that it's changed is now that um, the CEO of the joint organisation, which is another imposed structure that the New South Wales government has imposed on local councils um, so that they can deal with us rather than individually as a group because we're so far away and difficult to deal with, apparently. Um, thank you. So <clears throat> local people need to be... Uh, and, and were indeed um, actively engaged in the management of, for example, Menindi Lakes. Um, the water quality, I believe, uh, I have seen, for example, on the Swan River when they had blue-green algae, uh, river watch groups spring up. Locals that live along affected sections of river were trained in how to take scientifically approved samples, which could then be sent off for testing, um, and the results brought back publicly recorded um, so that people knew what was happening. There has been a lot of anecdotal evidence of diagnoses, cluster diagnoses, of everything from bacterial meningi meningitis, um, lots of uh, different skin conditions, um, particularly in the young and the vulnerable, um, and uh, three at last count of um, motor neuron disease in Menindi, um, where there are cluster diagnoses of um, uh, anything that could be related to water quality, I believe they need to be um, reported publicly like communicable diseases are. Um, GPs need to be on board and regions, areas and councils need to be involved in informing the public that there are uh, quality issues that need to be dealt with um, because otherwise there will be no way of knowing uh, how the local water in your area is impacting you or indeed the food chain, which is a whole nother kettle of fish. Um, I believe that 
when there is a water quality event downstream, there needs to be an immediate embargo upstream. Um, I believe that uh, a lot of the changes in the 2012 Barwon Darling Water Sharing Plan need to be reversed. I believe there needs to be a focus on end of system flows. I believe rams are listing for Menindi Lakes. Um, if it cannot happen, it at the very least needs to be assessed against the criteria to determine whether it can happen. Um, I also believe that the I, I was out at Louth uh, recently, having not been there for 26 years, the landscape itself is a moonscape. There is a very fine clay dust. Even if there is a hell of a lot of water over the next few months, um, it will not restore the damage that has been done. We are looking at climate change in action. The river itself is hundreds of thousands of years old. We know there's been um, humans gathering around Lake uh, Menindi for at least 23,000 years. In our backyard at Lake Mungo, there's scientific evidence of human habitation from about 45,000 years. There's been, um, there's, there's been a lot of uh, change to the landscape, and I think we're going to see more into the future. And I'm out of time. Thank you so much. Thank you. I have a question. That you're, not, you're not finished yet. Um, thank you so much for that. Um, can I just ask a couple of questions, and it's just from your opinion. You've spoken of the need for something like a national water ob ombudsman, and you've also talked about the need for local communities to be more engaged. And yet at the same time in Australia, you know, we have this situation where because of historical reasons, the state governments have most of the control over water in their jurisdiction. Have you had thoughts about how local councils and local communities can be more empowered either in the current legal system or with a transformative vision for how things could be different so that the local communities, as you suggested, have a greater kind of involvement and say and responsibility for what's actually going on. Have you thought about how we can do that better? Absolutely, and, and that's something that I, along with other councillor present and, and others, have been working towards. Um, uh, there, there have, over at least a decade, been a, a systemic dismantling of um, local structures that have supported um, engagement and management of um, the local landscape. For example, we used to have a Gold Gold State Forest there. Um, it, it speaks to uh, successive governments, to be fair, um, devaluing the environment and all those structures that support um, environmental management um, and the use of local wisdom in uh, taking care of the regions. So through council I've been trying to do as much as we can engaging South Australian councils in um, understanding how less water from Menindi and down the Lower Darling will ultimately impact them, um, trying to bring that up through the catchments towards the upper end so that at least from a council level, um, those people who are making local decisions can have a bit more of an understanding of how what's going on in their little patch is affected from what happens upstream and affects what's going on downstream because there has also been a disconnect between, as we've heard previously, the northern basin, the southern basin. Um, upstream of Poon Carey is being pitted against downstream of Poon Carey. Um, people in Menindi are being isolated and put at war against each other. There is segregation by skin colour in consultation at the moment. This is happening right now in this day and age and this is not good enough. And the people on the street know it, and the governments can call it whatever they want, or the agencies, and um, try and make it sound as good as they can with all the spin they have. But, um, you know, we, we're not silly. In fact, a lot of people have a very deep level of knowledge about how things operate in their little patch of earth. And while not perhaps 
uh, used to or desirous of standing in front of people and telling them what they think, that that wisdom needs to be tapped into respectfully and are those people encouraged to help support um, you know, their, their little patch with the, the knowledge that they've, they've come to. Thank you. Other questions? Um, could you speak to um, the impact that the river's had on economies, um, local economies and businesses? It, that's, that's a really good point, Gwen. And um, in fact, I've left quite a few consultations asking the question, our region, Wentworth Shire, the main industry is agriculture. We have had, to date, the highest security water on the Darling River. There are, um, there, there is an amount of water that is um, high security um, and there are licences to use that. The irony is there is no water to do that. Um, if our largest economy can no longer exist, as we've seen in Menindi, economies fold. Um, and I'll add to that recreational fishing and the tourism that's related to that. Um, a lot of the tourism in our area does revolve around the river systems, the lakes, and even the, the dry inland, the Willandra Lakes World Heritage Area, by contrast, by way of contrast. Um, what then for us? Nobody can answer that. I mean, really, uh, what it seems to me is that if we could dig up all of this sand that's around here, we would find cobalt, titanium, iron ore. It really does feel like we're being depopulated because there is money to be had if we could get these pesky people and that silly river out of the way. That's how it feels, and it's not just me. Did I answer your question? Yes, you did answer the question. Other questions? Yep. Thank, Thank you. you so much. That's video footage of yourself being interviewed, anything at all, please send it through to us. Will do. Thank you.